Hey guys, and welcome to another casted game of Salami vs. The Muslim. The map is going to be Mountain Pass, which actually happens to be, apparently, my highest win rate map. I like that small joke, abusable by walls, playing insanely greedy behind it, or to buck expectations and to play aggressively, taking control of the middle and then taking the fight to an opponent who is under the guise of uh, being able to be so passive, defensive and greedy, will then be surprised by the feudal. This game is Salami versus the Muslim, and my chat will let me know what rank they are. Salami is actually rank 16 right now on the ladder, and the Muslim was rank 1 and 2 just a few days ago. Welcome to the Grub Club Guild Clover, thank you very much. Less than three to my love, Caro. Ah, Caro. That's how you know they really love you, when they use my stream to give the shout out. So this is, uh, this is cool, we got a game of Delhi versus Holy Roman Empire, my two favorite civilizations. Two scouts opening has been the choice for Salami. Keep in mind that every map has 12 sheep on the map, able to be divvied up between the two players. Going with two scouts increases your chances to get the lion's share of the pie. Right now, Salami has found 11 sheep, almost half. If you're two sc scouts against one, you would like to have 13 or more in order to validate your expense, thus securing a food source and denying it to your opponent as well. At this time he's found 12, so at the very least he can say he broke even uh, with the Muslim on the sheep count. Now Delhi doesn't need sheep as much, they actually gather a little bit faster from berry bushes. Even if the walking distance is a little further from the town center than the location where you can put your sheep. But the game of denial is definitely worth it, as the Muslim needs sheep a lot more. Being Holy Roman Empire, he'll be relying far more on sheep and deer, with pro scouts maybe, under the influence of the Aachen Chapel, than the berry bushes. Though I will say that berry bushes under an Aachen Chapel are fruitful indeed as you have that bonus gathering rate from the inspiration. Big gifts up from Grandfather 31 Old. Thanks for the five gift subs. Welcome to the Grub Club, boys. Uh, did that alert sound or did I just miss it? I don't know. There we go. 253 is when Salami can age up. He's gone for the quick lumber camp and the mill in order to get his upgrades nice and early, getting that economic bonus. And he's got a very interesting amount of three villagers on his uh, gold. 15 sheep were found. He definitely has more than the Muslim. 15 out of 24, leaving maximum of 9 to the Muslim if all the sheep are found and rounded up. And led to the slaughter for the securing the future villager production. So nice. Upgrades for Mosque currently idle. Uh, not working on that yet. Pretty big mistake. You want that efficient production immediately. But who knows what's going on in his mind. And the mental pressure of playing against a player like the Muslim, that's got to be quite something as well. Having been rank one and even winning a recent tournament, coming out of left field, kind of. I've played against the Muslim often in Warcraft 3 and SE2, and he's a very strong competitor. And he surprisingly, not entirely surprisingly, but maybe too many, uh, made it so high in Age of Empires, really gelling with the game. I don't know his previous experience in Age of Empires. I know Salami came from uh, Age of Empires 3, I believe. Maybe Age of Empires Online. And he even says that he came from uh, like Overwatch or something, or Team Fortress, I don't know, something like that. But uh, he's played a host of different games. This is a very open mountain pass. There's a small opening here, a bigger one here, and a small opening here as well. Oh, Apex Legends, <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Apex Legends gamer, by the way. So let's see how Salami is going to be playing this. We have an Aachen Chapel coming up for the Muslim uh, relatively slowly. Note how he only has a single villager gathering on the chapel. That can be confusing, but it can work out if you have decided that current gathering rate trumps the speed of getting to feudal. And that current gathering rate gives you a surplus of resources and if we look at his bank he's got a lot of food gold and wood by slowing down his Aachen Chapel even though Aachen Chapel quicker would extend the buff of inspiration to more people at the same time maybe there's something to be said for how he's done it Holy Roman is one of the Muslims favorite civilizations so I watch what he's doing even through the veil of the fog of war with great interest 
The villager distribution says, and the resource count says, he probably wants one or two structures in order to make some uh, infantry or military or stables or horsemen, what have you, but still head to the castle age relatively quickly. Walls have been put up. The Muslim has put up a small red wooden palisade here, whereas Salami is controlling the larger pass-through with an initial wooden wall, also leaving space for a future follow-up stone wall. Salami has a large attribution of villagers to food and to gold. In particular, the gold seems to be completely out of whack with the speed that you would expect Castle Age to be able to be coming out, as his gold will outpace his food generation possibility. Production-wise, Salami has not made great investments. I count no barracks, no stables, no archery ranges, no real way to secure these wooden walls had there been any form of light aggression from the Muslim. Even just a number of scouts, one or two horsemen, two spearmen or one archer would have done much to slow down and to make it more costly for Salami to make these wooden walls. But the Muslim has let everything happen. And why shouldn't he, he says in Bilbo's sneaky voice. Then again, why shouldn't I? Because the pressures are already on his side of the map. Counting one relic, two relics, and my precious, the third relic. So he doesn't need the two relics that are on the side of Salami's side of the map. One villager building is the choice, says Red Factor, when not inspiring at least 15 villagers with Aachen Chapel. And that's, I think, where the where we confirm what I just said, that maybe speeding up the Aachen Chapel faster could have been good, Red Factor, because he would have indeed inspired four on gold, four on wood, and ten on, uh, on food. But we have a castle age start at 7.20 for the Muslim. Anywhere between 7 minutes and 7.30 is considered extremely fast and is definitely doable and reachable for a Holy Roman player that doesn't get harassed. Salami did not really provide harassment. He does send out his scholars to the Muslim side of the map already. Interesting. These two relics. And you know, he did a lot of scouting against the Muslim. He knew the Muslim has a passive approach into this game. But here's a spear boy, he's going with the pokey poke, and Salami is closing in on Castle Age, but not quite there yet. There's scouts and spears chasing him, he's bringing his own scouts into the fold, and he's got nothing to defend them yet. Now that he has enough, I assume he's gonna bring all of his villagers. I think he's gonna build this with 20 plus villagers. Maybe he would have if he brings these three in. That's the only way that he can get a scout timing that you would say yes sir to. The Muslim reaches Castle Age first, but he's not currently in position to pick up these relics. Does he know how how much time, how much speed he needs to actually introduce in order to get these? Oh, the Muslim does get his own relics. One relic being picked up already. He's got his prelates in position. The decision for Salami to not bring any units here has seen his plan to go to castle and yoink these relics fail, despite the large attribution of villagers into this uh, landmark, reaching compound defender. He's not able to steal these two relics. The Muslim outsmarts him, gets a big advantage. All that Salami can do is pick up his own two relics and see his plans be for naught. The scholars run home with their tail between their legs. The walk of shame Nothing to show for their efforts, not even trying to get the sacred site. That too goes to the Muslim. And the close by Regnitz Cathedral, quite far away from the relative safety of the town center, actually allows the ramp up of gold resources for the Muslim to start even sooner. Regnitz Cathedral still has a small little bug. The emergency repair, the special upgrade for Holy Roman Empire, cannot be utilized on this structure. So it is a point of some interest that this has less defenses. But perhaps a keep, a couple of outposts or some walls can help keep this safe. Though I will say keeping the Reckness safe is usually not the first of the concerns for the Holy Roman Empire player. You see, for it is Holy Roman Empire players that are the most greedy among all players in... I almost said Heroes of the Storm, I don't know where that came from. In Age of Empires 4. And so they think in terms of offense and greed. 
every relic deposited in the Regnitz Cathedral will give an amount of gold equal to seven and a half villagers on a gold mining camp. To put that in perspective, one single relic is sponsoring the Muslims equal to these eight villagers. An enormous amount. Men at arms are coming in. Salami is making men at arms from a single barracks with a scholar inside. Currently, he's got four men at arms to his name. In terms of blacksmith, Salami has none. Deviating greatly from the desire for de Delhi players to make early blacksmiths in order to jumpstart those upgrades and get a get a go get going with those. That is because he put so much effort into trying to deny the relics. Furthermore, a nice gold income is being secured by these two relics and the sacred site. It's good for 400 gold per minute. This is of course in stark contrast to what the Muslim has, which is 1000 gold per minute, the three relics and the site. That's a 600 gold per minute difference, which equates to a difference of 15 villagers. With 35 villagers, Salami probably has one or two more than the Muslim, maybe three, due to the necessity to make prelates. So we can say that the Muslim is ahead in about 12 villagers worth of mining. Not only that, but many of those are slated to be inspired with a 40% bonus gathering rate. In the meantime, what Delhi does get is upgrades for free. It's very likely that the Muslim doesn't have a single economic upgrade, as it's simply not worth it yet. This early in the game, slowing down castle age timings, imperial timings, unit production, unit upgrades, and so on and so forth. So this is one advantage that Delhi players will indeed end up having. And although the Holy Roman Empire men at arms are known for their special upgrades, he doesn't quite have the numbers yet to contest these men at arms. He does have the two-handed mace upgrade. You can see this visually in how they're gripping their mace with two hands and not having the shield and sword anymore that is so iconic on the Delhi men at arms. And we can also see it in the damage. These men at arms from Salami had 12 damage until just recently but because of the house of learning just finishing the honed blades he now has 15 damage juxtaposed against the 15 from the muslim this proves he has all the unique men at arms upgrades he's got the heavy maces giving plus six to heavy he's got the two-handed maces and he's got one melee attack upgrade from the blacksmith as such there's much more damage being done here by the muslims men at arms six more in fact due to that unique civilization upgrade and that easily has him make short work of these men at arms. All seems to be going wrong for Salami, but the game goes on, it endures. Where will this be headed? He's got one blacksmith working on melee attack, and his other blacksmith currently decommissioned, not in use yet. We can also see that Salami has taken some of his villagers off of gold since he's got a steady supply from the site. He had a few too many, leading to a large gold bank that he had no way to use yet. Much of that is now being sank into Tower War Elephants. Crossbows and men at arms. His current army is 12 men at arms in the Tower War Elephant. From the marketplace, we can see that much gold has been spent by one player or the other to buy food. And much gold has been spent to buy wood. Both players, of course, are fairly rich in gold, especially the Muslim. And it is often that Holy Roman Empire players will spend gold in order to buy some food and wood in order to restore balance to the force of their economy. Small little flank here by men at arms who now have 16 damage. Looking to search any weak points, probe. We see the Muslim just dropped his entire current economy to nearly zero. The income per minute has been fantastic for Demu. He had a lot of food, wood and gold, more in every category than Salami. But now that his resources is on zero, that can mean only one thing. Demu has started to age up to Palace of Swabia, a large investment of nearly 3,000 resources, still less than other factions play for it, but still an expensive spend. After that, Holy Roman Empire players will want to spend a lot on villagers, pumping them out, but this does take some time to scale up. A mixture of Landsknecht, Spears and Men-at-Arms meets a small expeditionary force of Men-at-Arms, two Tower War Elephants, and he doesn't know about the second one yet. The obvious point of attack would be the Regnitz Cathedral. Killing it would allow Salami to nullify the gold income. 
and take away much of that value that Palace of Swabia could otherwise offer. Let's see how Salami plans to play this. He's walled himself in from the flank so that he can't be flanked. And his men at arms are starting to wall all the way downtown. If he can get this wooden wall up, it will create a small, useful buffer that will allow him to steal the sacred site, equalizing gold income almost. 200, 400, 600 against 900. Not quite equalizing, but he'll only have 50% less instead of two and a half times less. Spears are good into Tower War Elephants, having bonus damage due to their cavalry denotation. And the men at arms and Landsknecht will make short work of Salami's men at arms. This seems like a fantastic fight for the Muslim. And I may have misinterpreted things. Maybe he didn't start Imperial yet. Maybe everything went into the spend of current resources. A uh, misconstruction due to the lack of fog of war. I think it's a fair misassumption. That's why we watch these replays from a single point of view. Absolutely dumpstering. Everything that Salami has here is beginning of a foothold. Hello there. Six months is around a half month kappa. That's like half a decade, actually. But uh, you're welcome to help you with those uh, strange time denotations. Uh, thanks, Ellie Cooley. Welcome to the Grab Club. Welcome back. I appreciate it. So this army was thoroughly beaten. The Muslim made sure to keep control of his own side of the map. Not greedily going for Palace of Swabia. Instead, making sure that his side of the map remains his side. A quick wall of wood being thrown up here tries to keep the army out. And it actually is almost successful. But a small breach in the dam has secured the Muslim being able to flood through. He's got to make a choice, though. Send everything through and he might be walled in. Stuck with these elephants. But maybe that's exactly what he wants. How will he make use of this force trapped on the other side? Will he spread out and kill villagers? Or will he try to go for broke and destroy the army? This is a massive choke into Mangonel and Tower War Elephant. But he's destroying those poor, poor elephants. Oh my god. In come the swift scholars looking to save the day with some conversions. One conversion, two conversion. Can he stop both? I don't think he can. Ah! <laughs> no! For Delhi Lomsknecht. We've got two kinds of men at arms. See, they're in the same group. And you'll even see that they have different upgrades. Some men at arms have the forced march upgrade. And even though I control left click on one group, and they're clearly disparate groups. They're seen as the same unit, but really they're not, trust me. If we click at some of these men at arms, we can see, hey, some have 5-5 five, five armor, 16 damage. Whereas others yet, and we're kind of trying to find the two-handed ones, 6 armor, 16 damage. You copy the heavy bludgeoning maces that they have. So some have forced march, others have bonus damage against heavy. A cool amalgamation of different men at arms units with different skills and, and specialties. Walala. <laughs> so he carried those relics out, used them for combat, and now suddenly he's got the unit superiority. Wow, what a clump of units. Elephants with the bait. Oh, and now he's going for the Reckless Cathedral. Remember, it cannot be emergency repaired. This building never is said to be an influence, and that's the problem. He goes for it. Mangonels have bonus damage to building, so do units. A large force meets here, but keep in mind there's four Landsknecht here, four... The Delhi player as well, Salami, stealing victory from the jaws of defeat, potentially, if he wins it out here. He wins this battle. A big difference, a far cry from what we saw before. And the scholars greedily eyeing their brother's dinner. Are you quite finished? Can you finish that? Can I have your leftovers? As he's eyeing his brother's dinner and going for the Recknitz and says... Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Hungry for more, are we? Hungry for more relics? He's breaking that, and they're waiting for it. Palace of Swabia is coming up, but at a strange, strange time indeed. The scholar's eyes are opening, green with envy and jealousy. The relics pop out, and he doesn't know how quickly he needs to help himself to it before the parents intervene. Yoink, number one. Here comes Yoink, number two. And Yoink, number three. And Salami being who he is with his Salami guns does not walk back and bring them back into the coffer, sponsoring the holy income. No, no, he's not done yet. Uh, 
as the scholars stand ready to surround the villagers and the army of the Muslim here for further tricks and religious conversion. Armies are streaming in, scholars are coming in, elephants, men at arms, mangonels. And he's ready. He's ready for the next move. The Muslim has reached the Imperial Age, but his current resources are low indeed. And now he's lost that crucial income from the Regnitz Cathedral. The Great Siege has begun. Mangonels protected by the scholars here with their relics in hand. Upgrades are plodding along nicely. All the upgrades of Castle H for Salami have finished. And he's continuing to attack with his... Six men at arms from the Muslim, 14 from his own. Crossbows, mangonels, and so on. Here comes the big attack from the Muslim. He's using villagers as well. He's going for the attack, but there's layers and layers of conversion. He's trying to run away from every circle, and he does do so effectively. Whoa, triple relic conversion. There's a fourth one, and he has to run away once again. Mangonels are getting more and more free shots in on the army and the Muslim goes in for the final go. That was four conversions. He's counted them once, he's counted them twice and now he's trying to take down the Mangonels finally. Torch fire comes in, more Mangonels are coming in! So many Mangonels here and the scholars keep running about with their relics in tow but that's a lot of red. This is how the Muslim won the Winter Series in that final game against Vortex securing the seventh map victory for a 4-3 triumph. He pulls his villagers. He's not afraid to do the extreme thing. Palace of Swabia can print them out. Brrr, five food per villager, five second per villager. So they've become army units indeed. Extra torch damage. Now they're starting to repair the Regnitz Cathedral with every villager costing a similar amount of uh, wood, but uh, needing, uh, doing less and less progress the first villager being the most valuable. Already, all villagers go down by a triple shot from the Mangonel. The red is trying to rout Salami here, making him run. But the lack of walls means that the floodgates are open. Relics get deposited. They start healing each other. <laughs> that looks so funny. <laughs> Reminds me of that song. Tunak, 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 now, when they bring the, the, rel the relics are of course on a two minute cooldown a two minute cooldown he can do conversion again after two minutes so it makes sense if you've got the multitask to bring them back a bit to the mosques and then later to bring them again for a big shalami gun conversion but it looks like order has been restored and if there's one thing that's for certain is that holy roman empire can always recover when given time with that palace of swabia he will have to do without the 22.5 villagers relic bonus generation of gold. And that is a sore, sore point and a big loss for the Muslim. But if he's given enough time, if he can start to gather from these gold nodes over here and there, he may stand a chance yet. With Imperial upgrades kicking in and going elite men at arms, elite spears, elite landsknecht, what have you, he may still have a chance. But the pressure from Salami is never ending. 11 men at arms, 3 mangonels, and a Tower War Elephant. In production, crossbows, mangonels, and men at arms. And the scholars are ready for step number two. There's six scholars coming with five relics in hand. He's going for broke. He's got 900 gold per minute with just eight villagers. Much of that was relics. He's gonna drop in gold a lot. This feels like an all-in. He's at 106 food against God knows what from the Muslim. That's a very small food count. And many of his villagers are currently idle. He's got to pop those over on lumber. How is Salami going to win this game? I don't think he can. I think Swabia has gotten too much chance. Too much chance to work away here. Though the gold has been denied by Salami's walls. How did he do that? It must have been those four minute arms earlier. So we know that the Muslim only has got this big gold here. But that might just be enough. Look at his income. 1200. I think there's a lot of villagers here with a prelate in position. But mangonels are coming in. Springholds could help here for the Muslim. If he has Springholds, he could shoot down the mangonels, maybe even the scholars. But if he tries to use the classical, the Muslim approach, which is mass army flooding, I feel like Salami may actually have to counter against that with his scholar mangonel combo. If you had told me three months ago, a big strat, it's gonna be Scholar Mangonel. I would have scoffed at you. 
you can't even heal the mangonels. But you can see how it works out. And the wooden palisade walls give a fallback point of safety that is uniquely suited to defend against the Muslims' preferred counter style. Army broke through the wall here, but there's a second wall. So little production for Salami this whole game. Two barracks, a range, and a, and a siege workshop. It doesn't quite bear thinking about that that's all he ever made, but it seems to have been enough. With scholars inside, he has four scholars inside, so all of them count double. So it's like four racks, two range, and two workshop. But still, he probably could do with a few more. Having said that, the pressure is on once again. Mangonels do amazing damage to farm plastics, one-shotting them. And now it's the turn for the Aachen Chapel to be attacked. There was a large counterattack, though, by units from the back. I don't know where they are right now, but the onion layers of walls are keeping Salami safe for now. He's continuing to fire away. Whoa! The four wall alone! The villagers! There's only one counter! You've got to kill them! There's no hope! <gasps> <laughs> so many villagers now he's starting the torch attack <laughs> give you anxiety actually I had a really cool counter against this when I did a uh, conversion on villagers against him he actually clicked all his villagers and held the delete key killing all the villagers rather than seeing them fall into the hands of the opponent <laughs> the villagers steal the taking away the pulling out of the rug for out from underneath the muslim suddenly no more gold and those bombards they're getting attacked by forced march elite men at arms these are elite men at arms huh when did salami get imperial he's not wait how does he have elite men at arms with forced march so those are men at arms he stole before and then later the muslim upgrades them and then he still could, then he still receives the upgrade from the enemy. <laughs> so if you take uh, an early man at arms, convert it, and your opponent keeps upgrading them, attack, defense, armor, health, and heavy maces, elite, you're getting all of that. That's amazing. I must have, they must have, I must have clicked a different one that that had force march and not that one. Yeah, I don't think that one had force march, but he got elite man at arms. I don't think he upgraded them before the steal. I think all the steals went to the villagers. So he took down that bombard. And now what the Muslim needs is he needs to break through this wall. And he did fire cutting. So he needs to go for gold here. This is open as well. The pressure is still on. Salami got many villagers from that. And now he's getting gold with those villagers. He's got 90 villagers. He stole 17 of them. And they even have 75 health. And his own have 50. So you can tell which ones are from the Muslim because, you know, not only do they have 75 health, which is unique, they also have increased carrying capacity. Holy Roman bonus, carry 14 with wheelbarrows, 21. They're <laughs> carrying 21 resources. These are super villagers that he stole. Oh, he converted one minute arms at the gold mine. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So he did get that elite upgrade from there. Wow. Is the conversion available again? Yes, it is. This is tough to deal with. A fearsome style here uh, from Salami. What's he got? Seven mangonels, two elephants, 35 men at arms. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh man, he's just threatening with it. There's no real like counter against it. He can try to run at them. If he converts one at a time and just keeps running, that could just be uh, good enough. The Landsknecht are coming in, they've got to run. There's one conversion, doesn't get any. There's all the conversions. No, no, the wooden walls, run. Oh no, he got the Landsknecht and the villagers. They ask you how you are, you can just have to say that you're fine. They're not really fine. No, he took all the elite landscape. Oh, they're not elite yet. Well, at least they're not elite yet. And they're getting taken down. Absolutely destroyed here. That's disgusting. This should be illegal. That's illegal. Wow, he can now finally go Imperial himself. Salami can go Imperial, but he's spending his resources. 
He spends his resources on army so far, so far. Is he actually going to go Imperial? He could, you know, make his his uh, Imperial right here. No, he's where, where, where is he making it? Where is he making it? He's making it at home. Okay. Palace of the Sultan coming in right there. Villagers adding insult to injury using these super holy Roman villagers to kill the bomber. Oh, no. Oh, they get the kill too. No. It has four HP. It's getting repaired now. But so many mangonels. Are there more conversions available here? Let's see. No. That's it! That's it, GG! Mangonel! And a combination of Delhi and Holy Roman Empire units was enough to bring our rank 1-2 player to his knees. The Muslim falls to the salami shenanigans in a crazy quintuple wallalo game. GG. That's insane. That's the most amount of Wallalo I've ever seen in a single game.